Welcome to the Art Lady at Home. This episode is on my cooktop vent design. And I'm going to take you through and talk to you a little bit about how I came about this idea. Um, and then I'll talk to you about where I got some of the products from. First of all, I started off with my dream idea board. So I made this sketch and this was a hand-drawn sketch of where I wanted everything to go. Cabinets, how big the cooktop is, the drawers underneath. And this was the initial dream idea. And of course, a lot of things changed. The more I researched, the more I found. I found different kinds of corbels I liked. Um, but I took a lot of those ideas that I really, really, really loved and put them into um, that dream board. And then I brought it to the cabinet maker. And from there, he came up with some plans on the computer for the, the cabinets. And then what I did was I took copies of his plans and then I hand drew on the copies some of the detailed work like the onlays and the crown moldings that you see here and the little swans on my cooktop. And I did that so that I could visualize where everything is going to go as far as these onlays and details because his um, computer generated plans don't have that kind of detail in them, but I, I needed to see it visually. I also took with me some things I found from the internet so that he could have an idea of what I was looking for. And I originally had some very elaborate cooktop ideas and um, he told me that we need to simplify them so it could be easier for him to make. Um, originally, he wanted to take this cooktop and if you take this, it's, it's a lot easier to physically make if you're gonna do this at home, not to have it angled back like this, unless you're a really skilled woodworker. Um, his actually, in his home, he just made it a square box on top and this is kind of like a mantelpiece at the bottom. Um, but I did really, really kind of want that look of laying back. And, and um, so since he was my brother, he, he said, okay, I'll do it. And he did it for me. But um, if you're working at home and can't do some of these angles, he did say it wasn't that fun of an experience. So uh, you might need to uh, make it simpler for yourself. Uh, but I just want to say that that is a challenge there if you're going to do that angle on your own. Um, but the rest of it basically is boxes. The bottom here is a boxed column. And what I did was I took the measurements from the corbel. And then we wanted it to, originally I wanted it to come out the box piece on the bottom more into my cat countertops. And actually that was the design up until I had the countertops installed. After the countertops came in, um, I decided to have them stick out only a few inches. Um, and then I have this little bar sink and it's actually a uh, vegetable sink uh, next to the, the cooktop. So I did not want those, that pillar to stick, stick out any further, as you can see. So it would be too close to the wet areas of my sink. And so we changed the design and made it stick out just as far as the corbels. So as you create things and, and you see things visually, sometimes your designs will change. And that's what happened with this cooktop. We did not start uh, manufacturing this until um, we finished all the counters and cabinets. And then we were able to, that's where we tweaked some of the designs. But uh, what we did was we took the measurement from the corbel and then we, we stuck up, we, we added the box at the bottom and then that's what gave us our dimension for the top box. And where you see the two flowers on the ends, that's that's the top uh, square rectangle box. And that's the box that holds the actual cooktop vent. And then, uh, then the top part up here is the part that angles back. And I don't know if he saved all the angles and the measurements and cutting for this or not that he figured out. Um, but if they do, I'll put a link to the bottom at the bottom for you and I'll add that into this. But um, for the plans of this, like I said, it's simpler if you just make a square top coming up. Um, and, his, and you'll see many of those examples on the internet. But this is just the look that I happen to be going for. Now, what I did was some of the onlays I found at Oatwater Plastic and I wanted to keep this simple yet I wanted it to fill in um, areas. I didn't want any big blank areas. 
I wanted the bottom with the swans when I designed it. This is, this is the plate. The plate that the swan is sitting on um, is actually, um, is a little bit thinner than the actual box. And so then the design down at the bottom, I didn't want this to be exactly plain. So what he did was he made just a miniature frame with some trim, trimming out the bottom to match that same dimension as the swan's back plate. Like I said, the swan did come with that back plate. And then what I did was I mounted, we mounted this um, carved rose design so that it centered on the swan in this square area here. And then this is the this beautiful graceful curve that we designed across the front top, giving it kind of like that French country hearth look. And then what I did was I took two curved onlays and I purchased these from Outwater Plastic and uh, I did one small one and they come in different sizes, smalls, mediums, larges, different sizes, like a 15 inch, 12 inch, nine inch. And so I took one larger one and then I combined it with one smaller one. And so this is custom cut to fit this curve. And you, you can see how beautifully we blended this in so that it follows the curve with the two pieces. And from a distance, you can't tell where the two pieces are, but if you look at the flower that's on the right, you'll see where the, right past the flower, there's a leaf and then it ends. That was the original first piece small one and then the larger second piece and what I did was I cut on a machine I cut off part of the onlay and then I blended it down so that it would mix together you can kind of see what in the very center where that shine is showing that highlight and that's where I carved it down so that it it matched in the same thickness as this piece of the onlay so I blended the two pieces together so it kind of looks like one swag in that large curve. And that was important for craftsmanship because those kind of little details are what make the piece and the furniture, you know, more professional. If you just took it on and stuck it on, it's not gonna follow the curve, just kind of like this one here. Uh, if it just sticks on, I kind of wanted it to be framed out and a little bit more decorative. But again, this was becoming more and more and more decorative and I wanted to, I want it to be a centerpiece, but not overly done. The, the top carving here is actually not wood. This is a resin uh, carving um, that I that I purchased at Outwater Plastic and it was the only swan flat carving I could find. And this is where I wanted to tie in, you know, the swans and the roses together. So the centerpiece has the swans and then the rose garlands around the edges. And this rose garland theme matches the kitchen cabinet, um, counter, I mean the kitchen cabinet doors. Um, I have some of the carved onlays that are on the kitchen cabinet doors right here. And if you wanna um, find out more about how I made these doors, there's another uh, video about the doors. But this is about the cooktop vent. Um, so after we figured out how to how to cut out all the shapes, um, we just we we built the built the box and then we did have a bit of a challenge with that plastic on light it's actually a resin on light when we were st we were glazing it it was taking the wood took more of the glaze than the resin so what was happening is the resin piece was getting very light and the wood was getting very dark and also with this cooktop vent we needed to have, this is an extra large cooktop vent. It's really wide. And I wanted it to fill that space so that I had space extra around my cooktop. This is a 36 inch uh, GE profile cooktop. And I wanted, I didn't want the wood to be really close to th the ending of my cooktop. I wanted space so that I could put a pot, put something there. And so I ended up having to go with a really wide um, cooktop vent. The opening in this cooktop, this will just tell you how big this is. The, the opening that you see here that I have not tiled yet is 47 inches. And I, I believe the height in that opening, so it's that blank white space, that height I think was 20, big is that? 20 I think it was like 24 inches or 26, 
I know it was a little a little bit over the 24, but the the, the width is 47. That opening. Um, so this was a huge piece, huge cooktop vent, and we had to piece the top of it. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, you can kind of see it right here. So the top of it was actually pieced together. It was wider than the four foot width of the plywood that he used for the uh, the cooktop. So he had to piece them on both sides. And he could have done it the four by eight, but he wanted the grain of the wood to go in a certain direction. So he said that he, you know, that so he had to do it this way. So that ended up being a little bit darker than the other areas. Um, but, it, but from a distance, it kind of just blends in and with the shadow of the kitchen, you really can't tell. Um, you know, it doesn't bother me much. But that is the story of how we created our cooktop vent.